Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live 10 questions with series. Here we chat with entrepreneurs and business leaders to hear about their journey, the lessons they've learned along the way, and any advice they can share with all of us, you know, to help you and me and anyone that's tuning in right now in their journey too. Now, today we're chatting with Jess Kennedy. She's the co-founder and COO of Make a Beeline, the company helping people get home loans right from their sofa and even have a little bit of fun doing it. I know, home loans and fun don't seem to go together, but Beeline is changing that. Now, if you have any questions throughout our conversation today, make sure you leave them in the comments right here, wherever you're tuning in from, and we'll answer them right at the end of the interview. Now, I'm super excited to welcome Beeline's co-founder and COO, Jess Kennedy. Hi, Jess. Hey, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I know. Me too. Me too. Now, I gave our audience a basic idea of Beeline, but I'd love for you to describe the company in your own words, considering, you know, you helped founded it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. So Beeline is exactly what it says. Um, we are the shortest path to someone's home loan, refinance, purchase transaction. Uh, typically, people go through this terrible meandering process when trying to get a loan. And we just want to cut out all the BS and get straight to the good stuff for people so they can get excited about buying a home or get excited about that financial freedom of a refi. I love that. And I'm super excited to learn more. So I say we dive right into our 10 questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. All right. Question number one, Jess, you started Beeline in 2018 and officially launched in 2020. Why now? What about this time in history made it right to take on an age old mortgage mortgage industry and modernize it? Well, we uh, it took two years to get the idea from idea stage to, uh, you know, production and reality. So it took took a while. But you know, this this whole industry is super antiquated, as you kind of alluded yeah. to, and it's ready for people to have this great digital experience. So many people yeah. get to have the digital experience with other financial products. And mortgage just hasn't caught up to everybody else yet. And so we're ready to bring that forward and bring the ease to people that they're looking for in so many other financial areas. And, yeah. you know, COVID was not anticipated when we started this, but it really has brought forward that idea of I want to be home and do everything I need to do from the comfort of my sofa. Yeah, that, uh, that couldn't have been more perfect timing, huh? It, it was. I mean, could <laughs> not have planned it, but the industry is ripe for this change. Yeah. Now you've worked with Beeline CEO, Nick Liuza. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Liuza, yep. Liuza for six years now. Yep. How did you know he was someone that you wanted to start a company with? What makes him a great partner? So Nick is one of those crazy magnetic people. So he walks into the room, everybody wants to talk to him. He's a lot of fun, very positive, but he's also one of those people that loves to empower others. And so I just think that that is just something people feed off of. And it's just, it's totally aligned with my personal values. And Nick has a really strong track record of success in other businesses and loves to be a total visionary and think, you know, 10 steps ahead of everybody else. And that is the kind of person that I definitely want to work with for the end, like for forever. So I retire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's the kind of person we'd all want to work with forever. That's great. Um, okay, question number three. Beeline, the Beeline founding team is from all different corners of the world, quite literally, even a few from Australia. What's the benefit of having diverse backgrounds like this, especially for the executive team? Yeah, I mean, look, there's there's not a lot of teams out there that have six co-founders, but and especially on different continents. Uh, but having the Australian team join us in the U.S., we all really complement one, one another. So they built this brand in Australia that uh, was a direct-to-consumer brand for lending. They're the best in the game for brand, product design, product building, and marketing. And those mm -hmm. are all things that Nick, Peter, and I on the U.S. side had no experience in. Uh, mm -hmm. We knew how to run the operation, get scalable, you know, deal with the finance and kind of all the boring stuff. And they get to deal with all the super fun stuff. Uh, through the Australian team, but all of us together bring these really unique experiences and backgrounds. And it is a team that I would not trade for the world. I am so proud to be on such a talented team with these people. Yeah, I think that's something we've been talking about a lot lately is just like having 
you know, n diversity, not just in the way people look, but just from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, all different areas. It just helps so much illuminate different um, ideas and things you would have okay. never thought of. So I, I love that. Um, question number four, you had to build the Beeline team virtually, as we talked about, you know, you guys launched in 2020. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of things went virtual then. Um, mm -hmm. How have you done that over the past year? What are some tips that you can share around remote hiring? It's it's a challenge, there's no doubt. We've built over 85% of our team uh, in this COVID environment, but we found some things that really worked for us. And one of them was having a really tight recruitment process uh, from the time that we've identified the need through actually like recruiting and going out and finding the people to the interview process internally. And so we keep that really tight and very process oriented and make sure that the right people are talking to the candidates. And the other piece of it is just having video calls like this, like being able to read body language, really feel like this is the best we're going to get right now with getting to know somebody. But doing those two things has made a world of difference. And I would say before we started doing those things, we were not as successful in some of the hiring we're doing in our very early days as we were getting our feet under us and trying to hire in this remote environment. But I think we've got it pretty well nailed at this point now. That's great. Uh, question number five, Beeline leverages artificial intelligence and machine learning to make home loans easier. But building technology alongside an operation like you guys have is not so easy. What major changes did you have to make along the way and what did you learn from that? You know, it's kind of cool to start from a blank sheet of paper on both sides. So we yeah. had no legacy operation. We had no legacy technology. And so we got to build them in lockstep with one another. And while that is an enormous undertaking, one doesn't necessarily need to catch up with the other like it would when you have one already in place and not, you know, not the other. So it was it's more like we're making sure that the two keep pace with each other over time because we do development sprints every two to three weeks. So the team here in operations has to keep up with all of those technology changes. And so we're finding that that's really what we're focused on now is making sure those rollouts happen and training happens in a timely way. So we're maximizing our technology. Um, many businesses believe technology like this, machine learning and AI are complex and expensive, but it's really your differentiator. Mm -hmm. How did you evaluate the cost benefit of going this route? So it's really expensive to start with, to start building a technology like this, this end-to-end -end kind of solution. But when you think about the cost of human capital over time and having to just fill butts and seats because you have not focused on your technology, those costs in the long run far outweigh the cost of the upfront hit of the technology. So it made mm. sense to us all day long to go this route. Yeah. Beeline provides users technology they need to make home loans less of a headache, but what technology enables Beeline? We're dealing with a refinance boom in a volatile market right now. How does technology help you adapt? I mean, that's the beauty of this, is we use artificial intelligence, machine learning. And so as a person's going through their journey to give us their information so we can start the process for them, you know, this, this AI and this machine learning are grabbing the data, they're interpreting the data, they're validating the data, and it's all in live time. So you don't have someone behind the screen staring and comparing and then having to make a decision. It's all happening live as the person's filling out their online application, which what we have is so much more than that. But that's, that's the beauty of it is this, it's almost like instant gratification, right? We're all in this like insta culture. And right. this gives us that and it brings all those like time consuming pieces forward into a 15 minute journey, which is the exciting part about all of this. Yeah, definitely. I have, I'm not quite there yet, but I have a, a few friends who have just gone through the home buying process and watching them, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, um, I'm in California. So unfortunately we, we don't have Beeline here yet. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say we won't in the future, but it, it really is. It's so exciting to hear a company like yours that's making such waves like this. Um, question number eight, you've received $7.6 million in seed funding. What data are you using to fuel decisions around spending right now? Or in other words, what parts of the company are you currently focused on bolstering and why? Yeah, right now it is a big focus on our tech roadmap. What mm -hmm. will we release next? What features do we want to add? 
uh, features internally from a production and scalability standpoint and features for our consumers as well. Uh, that's our probably our biggest, you know, dollar hit and where we want to focus our money. Um, and yeah. the other is obviously growing the team in a really smart and scalable way. So mm -hmm. two biggest areas for sure. Great. I love that Beeline is all about humanizing a very transactional thing, something that marks, again, such an exciting for pe exciting chapter for people. I've seen my friends go through this now. Um, it's, it's so awesome to watch. And yet you're doing it, um, you, you know, you're, you're making this transactional thing more human, but you're doing it with technology. So what is the balance there for the customer experience? How do other brands, people that are tuning in, companies that are tuning in right now, continue to offer a human touch in such a digital world? Yeah, we believe that it's a harmonious relationship. Uh, the humans and the technology should be working hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that humans really augment technology. And we have what are called long guides here, which are humans sitting right outside the door. I'm actually the room, of the room I'm in. And they offer these customers a single point of contact. And instead of having to be routed through a call center and have this like not great customer experience when you need to talk to a person, our customers get the same person from the time they start to the time they finish their loan. And it is it is this human component, right? That's great customer service when you can pick up the phone and get Drew or Rebecca on the phone and you've talked to them already a few times. But also if the customer doesn't want to talk to somebody that much, they want to fly more solo, they have mm -hmm. that option as well. And the technology enables them to do more on their own. So it's kind of like we kind of meet the customer where they're at. You know, yeah. do, you, do you want a heavy handhold or do you want to say like, no, I got this. I've done this a few times. I just want to get this done. Um, and so we, we just try to do that. We try to meet the customer wherever they're at. But we also allow people to omni-channel communicate with us so they can text their loan guide, call them, WhatsApp them, Facebook them. I mean, any method of communication they want to use, they can use it to talk to their loan guide. That's great. And we hear that, you know, across so many industries. I mean, warehousing immediately comes to mind when you say, you know, humans and technology working harmoniously together. It's really not to remove the human touch. It's it's in, it's to enable humans to do more of what they were hired to do, right? To be that exactly. person. If somebody is wanting Rebecca all the time, Rebecca can actually do her job rather than relying on, you know, manual processes or what have you to do that. That's exactly it. You, you nailed it. That's awesome. Well, our final question here, Jess, before we head into our Q&A with the audience, so if you are tuning in right now, please ask your questions for Jess in the comments and we will get to as many as we possibly can. But for now, Jess, question number 10. What does the future look like for other entrepreneurs after what you've accomplished? What does the next era of innovation look like? Well, I'll speak to our industry, and it is it is just ripe for people to continue to come into this space. Prop tech, fintech, it is a huge space with a ton of opportunity that's still really antiquated and backwards, relying on paper a lot and these, like you mentioned before, manual processes. So I think with anybody that's got a great idea that you know can get the idea lifted off the ground, uh, there's a need there's a huge need. And I think people get discouraged by saying like, I think someone else is already doing this, uh, is already out there like addressing this problem. Chances are they're not addressing the exact problem that you think they are. And there, there really is space out there for everybody. Love that. Um, all right, we definitely have some questions coming in now from the audience. And actually this one, this one ties right into what you just said. It doesn't seem like anyone has taken on the mortgage industry like this yet. Why do you think mm -hmm. that is? I think that there's a lot of people, a lot of companies out there that have taken on components, right? Like you think of like Roostify and Blend, like they've taken on these front end digital applications. Right. So that's a component of what we do, but we've kind of taken it a step further. And I think those are great companies that have done a lot to like bring forward the space and mortgage. What we're trying to do and what makes us a little bit different is we're trying to do this from end to end. So we're not focused on just one component of the process or one piece of the software. We're focused on the entire digital experience for the customer. That's great. Um, I have to tell you, Jess, we have a lot of hellos coming in. Hello from Uruguay, from Nigeria, from Egypt, from Palestine, Spain, Canada, another Spain. Wow, a lot Paris. Wow, there are so many people tuning in. Hello, everybody yeah. around the world. So, so glad that you guys are with us right now. Um, yeah, go visit. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, that's going to be the best. Can't wait. Um, all right, another question coming in here from Aaron. What's the biggest advice you can share from your experience? 
You know, I think it's for me personally, it's just bringing, bringing it every day, like bringing the best that I've got every day, leaving nothing on the table when I show up to my computer screen at home or coming into the office. Uh, Cause I want no regret personally on getting this thing lifted and launched and um, yeah, just leave it all, leave it all where you got it. Uh, you just gave me the chills. My like, my life motto really is just be, be the best version of yourself that you can be every single day. If you know that you're leaving that day behind going, I did everything my best. I was the best person I could be. I was the best employee. I could be whatever. I think yep. that's like, that's the only thing you can do. You can't be better than the best, right? That's exactly it. And you can't have any regrets when you do that. Yeah. Um, okay. Another question we've got coming in here. What's one of the biggest challenges you've faced as a female executive and what's your advice on overcoming something like that? So I've been really fortunate. My co-founding team, I mean, I, I work with five wonderful gentlemen, uh, but they have never made me feel in any way like I was different because I was a woman on this, you know, six person team with five of them being men. So yeah. I'm, I feel really fortunate. I, I always say I picked well, like this is a great founding team to have, you know, done this with. But I have been in other organizations where I have definitely felt marginalized or talked over in meetings, as I'm sure so many women can identify with. Um, and it's super frustrating. So, I mean, I just say, like, don't stop. Like, don't let that discourage you. You just have to keep moving forward and say what you need to say and, you know, push what you think is right. You, you can't right. worry about what other people think. Yeah. Love that. Um, I got to tell you, we have a couple more hellos coming in from Romania this time and Brazil. <laughs> so hello everyone. Um, all right. I think this will probably be our last question. We can see if we can squeeze one more. And so if you're tuning in, you can ask one more, if you have any, um, we'll get to it if we can, but last question coming in here, what, what's the most critical thing to consider when it comes to creating a great customer experience? It's easy empathy. I mean, we're mm -hmm. all customers in some way, somehow, right? Every time we go to the grocery store, buy something online, we're always a customer. And I think that really giving the great customer experience from our side is remembering how we want to feel when we're on the other end of that being the customer. Um, yeah. It's, you know, your mom's old adage, like treat others the way you want to be treated. So it's, yeah. you know, making sure that we're being clear and transparent, you know, no corporate, you know, butt covering and just leveling with people um, and giving them straight, honest answers. And I, I think that that's what people really want. Uh, you know, I, I actually just listened to a podcast episode. It's called Work Life. If you guys can go find it, it's across, uh, you know, all the different podcast platforms. And I have to shout out my colleague, David Luther, for turning me on to this podcast episode. But it dives into just that. It dives into empathy and vulnerability and how that plays a role, especially in customer service, but on the other end, too. So um, I just have to say, go listen to that. That I just listened to it this morning. So it's so funny that you just said that, Jess. Um, I will definitely listen. Yes, it's a it's great. Some great advice in there. Um, that is actually all the time we have for today on questions, Jess. But I just cannot thank you enough for joining us and for sharing your story. And you know, I look forward to all the excitingness. Can I say that? I'm really having a hard time speaking today. If I'm going to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for all. I'm looking forward to everything that's to come from Beeline in the future. And just so appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Me too. And as always, a big thanks to all of you for tuning in. We'll be back on Tuesday, March 2nd with the co-founder and CEO of Camp Gladiator, Jeff Davidson, and we'll see you then.